the nice things about AI generated art that you can generate so big variety of different elements that you can use in different applications or your project. Here is, for example, I like to generate this 3D backdrops that I use it in my compositing and I used also as a backdrops in a 3D applications when I'm rendering. So right here in this video, I want to go over how I set up the backdrops and three applications will be Vu, TerraGen and Dust Studio. I will have it the chapters below so you can jump directly to one application that you're using if you're interested to see how it's working, what tips and suggestions I have it how to do this. So right here, this is a nebulous I render um, created with a mid journey AI and we are just going to use one of them as example. Inside the view, we actually can use the background in two ways. The one older way that is before it was added. It's when we create a planet in the background. We're going inside the planet. Be sure it is kind of like our all background. So we'll just scale bigger right there. You can see it's kind of cover all of this um, size. So let me adjust a little bit so we can see better result. Okay, look right there. Okay. Well, just for fun, we can throw model, but you can see already we have it. And all what we need to do in planet is go click on a custom. And we're going to select one. I'm going to select the nebula. The one thing when you notice with nebula when we create it, it won't be sharp because when we render image, when we create an AI, the maximum size is about 2048 by 2048. In many cases, it's actually smaller. If you use it night cafe or another ones, it's much smaller size. So we want to upscale. And this is actually very important. For some other applications like in DAS, you can definitely see all the sharpness. So usually it's what I do. I use it gigapixel AI. It's work very, very well. And I'm just going straight forward, upload it and it will resize and it's make sharper. So it's look way nicer. This is way um, kind of updating in this. Uh, let's go back to our view and you can notice right here our image. The one thing is what we want to modify if we're using again the um, backdrop as a planet when you go to atmosphere editor and atmosphere editor inside we want going sky for case and modify here for example we want to take down a little bit on atmosphere height reduce our haze fog and just overall clear up uh, view as well we can take our sun position and one thing I like, you can even put it behind, almost like sun glowing on the side around here. It does produce not very kind of more natural look. For the backdrop, what I prefer to do is actually an atmosphere editor switch from photometric to the standard model. This will provide, you can see, better color saturations and as well going inside the camera. And inside camera property disable after exposure. So the nice things benefit of producing this way that we can actually take planet and rotate to showing properly how we want it, which area you want to display. As well, you have it more control so we can make it a wide, short. I mean you can change a lot of resolutions on this how it's displaying bring like a little bit down and so on. so it, it is a little bit more interesting you can see it's have a nice change and as well the sun will affect we can bring maybe even up higher if you want and it's add quite a bit interesting effect so we created more interesting backdrop effect like with a star galaxies nebulas and not necessarily this you can also apply trees um, like background clouds and I do sometimes this it save quite a bit time on render because it does not need it calculate true volumetric values for this it can just put it as an image on the background and all what you need to do here you just go ahead and create some mountains okay let's go right there 
we'll edit our mountains. And there you go, now we have it, our sci-fi look. I might be a little bit like this. So the line is going. And we can create a uh, different scenari a scenery and everything. So this is one way to do with Vue. And this is a little bit more older way. The newer way, let's go ahead, we'll hide the planet away from here. If we will open the camera properties. In camera properties, you'll notice right here, we have the backdrop. So let's go ahead, click on a backdrop. And with the backdrop, we can load it. So we can go click and says use it backdrop. Then we'll click on an icon with the image so we can preload it. And I will go and navigate. I'm going to use it upscale, the one with high resolution. It does apply very good. And one thing what I do recommend right here, see it says override atmosphere. So what's happening if you have it enable override atmosphere? You won't have it any effect. It will be just on the backdrop. So let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see the fog and other thing apply to our mountain. It does not apply to our environment. That's what we want. We want to disable this if you want to have it a little bit more natural look. And we'll go ahead and click OK this time. Now it will be correct properly atmosphere effect applied to our backdrop. The reason is why you don't want sometimes override atmosphere if you have it as a reference image when you set up mountains or something. Maybe in this case you want reference image, but usually if you just use it for the render, you want to disable this. Okay, also zoom factor is how close you want to be. One biggest uh, problem to create this, it is um, ratio, it will skew. So what is meaning? Let us right here. If I have my camera and I move it, you notice my background does not move. It's always in the same place. And rate show it's set to my active camera. This is good and bad. They're good because I can easily position. Don't need to worry. My background always in scenery. However, if I go to presets values, this is a square. But right now it's not a square. We can also just go and let's see like uh, free user define. And we'll have it very ultra wide like 2000 and you can see how it's skewed see how it's stretching and everything that is i find the biggest problem if you're using backdrops to the main camera inside the view so in this case if you want to use the backdrop or you need to take this backdrop and put it properly rate show inside like photoshop or other applications or you can use it other techniques where you use the planet just to the drop in this case planet won't have it any skew effect or other thing okay so this is how we're doing inside the view let's go to Terragen now so this is Terragen 4.3 I think latest 4.6 is out it should be any big difference will be very similar to what we have right here uh, the different primarily will be it is if you sign a view, we're using more visual things. Here will work a little bit more with the nodes. The things what we want to do, it is work on the background. And if we're going to object node, it's set by default. You can see right here we have it, our background. Right click and let's go to internal networks. And in internal networks, you can see we have it, our shader and we have it, our background shader also. Okay, so let's go ahead and add right click. Uh, let's go on top. Shader, we'll go to surface shader and we're going to use a default shader. So this is what we going to use instead the background shader. We can go right now, click and reconnect. Let's leave it for now, background shader here. From this is default shader. What we're going to use it is our color image connection. Okay, next we need to put our image inside and for this we'll go right click, going to the shaders again, going to the color shader and we'll use it image map shader with navigating to properly and what I'm going same I'm going to use the upscale and uh, when you use it not upscale it's, it's look very um, blurry not sharp so we want to upscale image so this is what I'm going to use right now we'll go open and insert in our node right here we have it, our image map 
OK, and let's go ahead, take this and connect to our color function. We still don't see anything because we need to do a couple more setups to make it available for viewing. OK, let's go to some properties. So we'll go to image map shader. Let's bring up one, change this plane to through the camera settings. And because we set through the camera, we also need control projection camera. And we'll just use assign our render camera. For now, we have it only one camera. If you have it more than one, you will select later. So this is one of the basic setup on this. Uh, let's go, just click stay open and just put on a side. And you know what, one more thing, so what right here where we created, we need increased size. So image size, you see 12, so what are we saying? One, two, two, eight, eight. And we'll set this one same, one, two, two, eight, eight. This one does help on the bottom, it's showing you what size of the pixel image and we'll want to match the size with current size of the image. And you know what, we need to go inside our default shaders, we'll go to image and we'll do just same things here as well. We'll set to the camera and we assign the render camera as well to this point. Okay, now let's go ahead inside the atmosphere settings and in atmosphere settings, just so we can see, I want to take my haze down blue sky just remove everything so we can preview a nice beautiful sky okay i can go to click and close all of this and it still be dark because we did not set luminosity properly so let's go ahead and open again and right there our luminosity is dark we can pop up a little bit brighter and as we add luminosity maybe about three five and as we create right here, we need our reference for luminosity. So I'm going to go ahead, open the image, and we'll open the same image as we used it before. Uh, it should pop up now properly. Um, we can also work a little bit more with luminosity at this point. You can have it a very bright or darker, whatever, how you want intensity. But it will be applying, and you can see right here, we have it already image apply. Okay, we do have some lines adjustments for this one. We can go inside the image mapper and work on the positioning for our image. So you can readjust position or set position low left center. And this way we can reposition our image to match without those seamless points. As well, you can change this image size that will may help as well. And this time you can play around more with different settings and uh, kind of try to match. One thing what I do like to do is produce tile in a view or inside the mid journey you can have a tile thing so it will tile the background. That one you can create this way. Again, through this settings, size and positioning, we can adjust um, how much we want to see. Oh, I maybe put it too much on this one. One, two, two, eight, eight. I think that is about right. Okay, the other things also, because we don't look through the camera, we can go ahead and click and says copy this positioning, what we have right here, to our active camera. And that will fix it some of these edges that we have before, because otherwise, can see what we go around we probably can see the edges because remember we assign map at this image render camera and this is what's happening because this edge of render camera again if we copy to position of the camera it will reposition it outside properly in this case okay now let me go readjust one more time and there we have it Nice, perfect image position. So this is where you can set up a backdrop inside the Terrigen. It does require a little bit more work than like in Vu, but you have it a quite bit more flexibility on what you can do. It. As well with this image map share, we can apply clouds and we can create really three-dimensional um, nebulous in this way if we don't going with Terrigen. Okay, so let's go ahead and look right now how we can do same things inside the DAS. Right here we have it a model inside the DAS, and I want maybe like do the restaurant on the end of the galaxy, you know, put it some galaxy behind this. For this one, we'll need work with environment map. Let's go to 
uh, where's our there is our environment if you don't see the environment when you switch to nvidia array that will create it we also can go to our render settings let's go to all and i just want to scroll down to see right here we have it our environment is preset um notice we have it i don't necessarily want to make floating on the ground but i have it shot right here i'm going to disable my um ground visible from below disable off and most important i will disable draw the ground off so it will make a little bit floating in this case next let's go ahead inside the environment tab and type is none we'll click down and select backdrop by default it will select with a color we need to select drop down icon and select on a browse that will help us loading i'm going to preload just the normal nebula for now and as we preload you can preview it is a little bit fuzzy it's the reason why it says upscale it's much better so as example if we're going to upscale and resharpening this will have it much more details on our view okay let's take a second to refresh it and upload it uh, as it's uploading the biggest problem with using as an environmental background that um, it will heavily rely on the aspect ratio similar that we have it in another application so what i was right here you can see okay yeah let's see how it's much sharper there but the problem is if we have it uh, 2000 2000 so if we scale for example 0 0.5 we don't need to do this dramatic but again it will just show you see how it's scale it's a squish same problem that we have it before with another applications the also other things what i suggest for you to do it's going inside um, our environmental environmental team and select color like reddish kind of maybe around so it's a match all environment this case you have it cast lighting on your object similar to our all environment and we can also take a little bit environment down take it okay and we have right here you can see apply a little bit tint so it's better fit in our environment the brightness on the background we can control by the lighting so if you click click on the light we can take for example darker and you can see it will decrease amount of the lightness and you can see how much darker it is so usually you probably want brighter if you want you can also apply just a little bit of a tint color if you feel like but generally this is where you control brightness in your background and as well tint color if needed and right here you can see we have a nice pleasant preview we can add additional like haze fog you can play with this but generally this is how you can put it backgrounds in the different applications like a vu tergen does similar things in actually a bit easy if you do with a blender cinema 4d and maya in other applications but generally i found the ai generated backgrounds for me is a lifesaver in many things when you want to render because it's add this extra details extra feeling to our image without spending too much time on creating i usually done them in photoshop which take hours and hours and right now it's much faster hopefully you find this video interesting to you give it some additional information how you can preset those parameters with the different applications if you have any questions please let me know um, also please subscribe give us thumbs up share this video let's spread around the more viewers the uh, have it more intense to create new videos hopefully you find um, this educational and have a fun time and great time to create your own art